number one Iron Age booty daddy. Dragon Ball Super Superhero was probably one of the first Dragon Ball, I guess, parts of the franchise that I've seen that didn't quite feel like Dragon Ball to me. I even said as much in my review. I admitted I could have been wrong, but the thing that threw me off the most was the animation. The animation being 3D in the way that it was really didn't have the Dragon Ball feel. The fact of the matter is, is when you build your franchise on what is now an iconic art form and an iconic look and style, it's really hard to change it and it's hard for some fans to accept it. Point in case. Now, one of the things that really threw me off was the artwork and it made me call into question some other parts of Dragon Ball Super, but ladies and gentlemen, it turns out the 3D animation was not all it's cracked up to be, even with the guys making it. So let's get over here, over here to Bounding Into Comics. And ladies and gentlemen, if you like what I am doing here on the channel, I do try to do some bigger stories throughout the week and things that I think that you will enjoy. And what I think you'll enjoy more is if you subscribe to the channel and you tune in on my Wednesday night and my Friday night live streams where you guys are going to get introduced to new creators, new authors, new comic book, you know, artists, and ultimately people who are building new IPs for you guys to choose your next favorite. So subscribe to the channel, like, ring the notification bell, so that way you guys can be here and hopefully be introduced to your new favorite. So over here on Bounding Into Comics, Dragon Ball Super Superhero staff reveal, uh, production team was unhappy with decision to animate films solely using 3D CGI. Now I've already gone through this a little bit, so I'm gonna skip this first small paragraph here. And we're gonna go down here, w word, <clears throat> word of the trouble being caused by the franchise's uh, burgeoning reliance on 3D animation in its cinematic outings as seen briefly during Gogeta and Broly's final fight in Dragon Ball Super Broly. Now, I'm going to full stop here. I think that the way that they did the 3D animation in Dragon Ball Super Broly was pot I, I I'm that's possibly the best Dragon Ball movie that I've ever seen. Up to that point, my favorite Dragon Ball uh movie, Dragon Ball Z movie, was Bojack Unbound. And now I can say definitively, because of the animation style, it is Dragon Ball Super Broly. Um and, and so I there there's a merger here, but let's keep going. And throughout the entirety of Dragon Ball Super Superhero was first noted by the film's producer, Tomohiro Hayashida, during the December 23rd Shueisha Online. According to Hayashida, not only were the costs to produce Dragon Ball Super Superhero in 3D so high that it would have actually been more cost effective to animate everything in 2D. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize. CGI is actually more expensive than a lot of practical effects and a lot more just animation, right? The cost of CGI is still very, very high. And that's where I all I have always said this CGI 3D animation, especially in like Dragon Ball, you get 75% of the way there with the traditional practical and hand drawn the way that we've known and seen throughout the years, and then use that last like 25% to really accentuate what's already there. Because honestly, CGI can be used as a wonderful tool to tune things up and to make things look really good but not if the baseline's not there. And I think that this is where we're getting the comment on. Sorry, there's a, there's a, some ads here and I'm, I'm having trouble getting rid of them. Um, and that it would have actually been more. Okay, but also that most of the staff at Toei Animation were wholly against the film being animated solely via computer graphics. This is something I agree with. I agreed with this in my review of it. And honestly, let's turn this into the positive. I'm glad that the company producing one of my favorite things growing up feels the same way that I do about how they animated the movie. I feel, and I use the word, I feel here very strongly. I feel that had they done 2D animation with a mix of 3D animation, it would have felt like Dragon Ball a lot more. It was really hard for me to get into Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Uh, 
And I, I honestly think because my kids had such a fun time with it, it actually colored my opinion more towards the positive. Uh, even my wife, who I just recently got into Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super. Then I even told her, hey, you want to see an elsewhere, an else world story technically? Because that's how it is now. Watch Dragon Ball GT. It's not as good. It's not as good as as obviously Z or even Super. I think Super is better, although Super has its problems. But, uh, you know, I even got my wife into it. And my wife said, you know, it just that animation was just off. And she's like, and sometimes you would forget it's there. But it was it was really staring you in the face. Then during a February 24th panel held during the Japan Expo SUD SUD uh, 2023 in France, Dragon Ball Super Superhero Animation Director uh, Chikashi uh, Kubota, hopefully I'm saying these correctly, revealed that despite the animators being unionized and the company operating in the black, things behind the scenes weren't perfectly tied up with the bright red ribbon. And that gets into a little bit more here. And this is where I'm going to cut the Bounding in the Comics article, but I would strongly recommend you guys all go to Bounding in the Comics and see what they're saying about this. The reason that I'm cutting it here is because this gives me a just a, a big hope that they will return to the 2D style of animation that all of us know and love Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super 4. Some of the most epic moments of my childhood were watching Dragon Ball Z in the weekly releases as it came out on Toonami, right? Obviously, I'm not a person I haven't gone through and watched all of the Japanese. I've watched the important Japanese scenes uh, and, and breakdowns to make sure that I understand the translations the way that they need to, because they did change a lot back in the day. Let's not fake out here, but this is fantastic. This is this is a company and these are people who care about the project and who know the project, especially if they're like, you know what, the 2D animation, it's not it's just not the thing that we should do. I felt that way when I watched this, and this makes me happy to see that behind the scenes and especially if they're releasing this now, I think if this is coming out now. They're probably testing the waters to see if maybe the next Dragon Ball property needs to be in 3D or 2D. I personally believe Dragon Ball Super, Broly, however they did that, that's the animation style they should go for. I don't know if you guys have problems with the story or not. I thought it was a great reinvention of the Broly mythos. I thought it was really cool. Could be wrong, totally, I don't know. Dragon Ball fans, you put two Dragon Ball fans in a room, they, we will fight to the death. We will fight to the death, it's great. And I love it. But I personally think that that animation style was the peak. The totally 3D animation style was a downhill. If they can get back to a point where it's 2D for a lot of the still moments, and then you accentuate the battle scenes, the fight scenes, the awesome Kamehameha's with 3D animation, that would be wonderful. And I hope that this is the direction they go in. That would be amazing. I am, it really, again, it's, this isn't like, oh, I gotcha, I told you, I didn't feel it was right. No, I'm not that guy. I don't want to be that guy. Man, this makes me happy. I was like, you know, that 3D just threw me off a little bit. And now the guys who are behind the scenes were like, eh, the 3D threw us off a little bit, right? That's awesome. As a fan of a franchise, that's, that's so awesome to hear that at least, at least the guys creating the thing are somewhat on the same page as myself and others like me. That's wonderful to hear. And that's great news to hear. That's, those are people who care about the franchise and are looking at it in a certain way. And I'm so glad that there are people in the company who are fighting for the traditional, fantastic, amazing 2D animation that we know Dragon Ball is capable of. Admittedly, episode five of Super was... Was it episode five? Oh, was it episode five? Yeah, I think it was episode five. That was There was some animation issues with, with Super as a whole, but that's fine. This is really wonderful to see it's nice instead of coming out and be like oh i knew it would no guys let's keep it positive let's be positive about this 
It's really awesome to see that behind the scenes, there were people, although they might have gotten overshadowed, although they may, but their voices are being heard right now by the fans, especially with articles like this coming out. So let me know. What do you guys think about this video? What do you guys think about my comments on Dragon Ball Super Superhero? Did you like the 3D animation of it? Have you seen it? Do you not like the animation of it? Do you like the 2D solid? No. Do you like the merger of 2D and 3D the way that I like 2D and 3D, like in Dragon Ball Super Broly? Where are you guys at with this? Let me know down in the comments below. And never forget, never, ever forget you dedicated time to me here. So if you comment down below, I dedicate a live stream every Sunday. It's called Sunday Coffee. I get my coffee cup out. It's at 11 a.m. Central. And I read your comments live in a live stream. So if I'm reading your comments and maybe you say, hey, I drink with crazy. You're a little crazy and you don't understand what you're talking about. And you go through a detailed thing. Hopefully it's not too long because I still got to dedicate time. But you say, hey, drink with crazy. Here's why you're wrong. And I read your comment and maybe I don't understand the context. You could be in the live chat right there saying, hey, you read my comment wrong. You didn't understand it. And you get the chance to correct me live. And that is how I dedicate time back to you. You dedicate time to me. I dedicate time to you. Because honestly, that's how we're going to make the world go around. And that's how we're going to get back to absolutely fantastic storytelling. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on A Drink the Crazy. And until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. Never forget, if you would like to be a part of my supporter live streams, head over to my Gilded or my Locals. Links down in the description. And you guys can join me for those live streams every single Wednesday. But right now, I would love to say thank you to everybody who is supporting me. Over on Locals, we've got Little Andean, Sword Rush, Frequency Studios, Katie Francis, Kikomon, Iron Age Media. We also have... Over on the Gilded, JP, the Myriosphere Origins, Skunk's Workshop, and the Gold Tier, he is an Iron Age booty daddy. Trippy Soul, also another Iron Age booty daddy, Kiko Mon, and Frequency Studios to round all of it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on the channel, and I will see you all in the supporter live streams.